Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about testing differential privacy with dual interpreter. Differential privacy introduces noise to data analysis tasks in order to mask sensitive information while preserving most of the data utility. So why do we want to test differential privacy? Differential privacy is not just a mathematical definition. As we can see, it is gaining momentum in real-world deployments. For example, the Census Bureau is applying differential privacy for the 2020 Census. Google is applying differential privacy to collect metrics from the Chrome browser. And Apple is applying differential privacy to collect iOS usage information. However, actually determining whether a program is differentially private or not is very error prone. Even a very small difference could mean being differentially private or not. As this VLDB paper from 2017 showed us, there are six variants of the same algorithm published by experts in the field. They all look very similar, but only two of them have the intended differential privacy property. There is a rich set of previous work that focuses on automatically validating differential privacy or detecting violations of differential privacy. On the left here, we have systems that produce proofs of differential privacy, either through automatic type checking, type checking with some light annotations, or systems that validates uh, machine checkable proofs. On the right, we have systems that tries to find evidence of violations of DP through statistical testing. Both kinds of systems have complementary strengths and weaknesses. Um, the proof-based systems give a very strong evidence of potential privacy since they are proofs. Um, however, the automated systems often work best on simpler algorithms, and they might fail to type check more complicated algorithms. The manual proof-based systems are much more expressive, but only very few people in the world have both the expertise in machine checkable proofs and differential privacy to use them. So these tools are much less accessible. Um, the statistical testing tools give a strong evidence of non differential privacy because uh, these are counterexamples. However, they require appropriate heuristics um, for building approximations of the underlying distribution of outputs and use these heuristics to compare these outputs, output distributions, to check for violations of DP. And different algorithms might require different heuristics. So is there something that we can reach for in the middle? Something that tries to capture the good characteristics, good characteristics from both kinds of systems. And the, char the characteristics that we want are the high level of automation from type systems and statistical testing systems the expressiveness of program logics, and the wide range of algorithms from really simple ones to really complicated ones. Um, so we introduce uh, DP Check, which is an automated testing framework for differential privacy that takes on a hybrid approach between proof search and statistical testing. We achieve this by looking at the structure of differential privacy proofs applied through a very commonly used proof technique. And we check uh, if we can satisfy symbolic models deduced from the general proof structure uh, together with concretely sampled execution traces from actually running the program. Before I tell you a little more about this hybrid approach, uh, I need to do some review on differential privacy. Uh, here, suppose we have collected a database of user information on whether people are smokers or not. 
and say an adversary is watching a counter um, of the total number of smokers in the database. As soon as we add Eve's confidential entry to the database, um, the adversary can infer that Eve is a smoker, leaking her sensitive information. We can make this kind of infer inference much more difficult for the adversary with the help of randomization. So we call a program differentially private if its output is sampled from a distribution that is robust through the change of any single person's data in the input database. Here, suppose we had removed Eve's role in the database, given that F is differentially private, we can see that the output distribution has not been perturbed very much. Uh, more precisely, the differential privacy property is parameterized by a non-negative uh, parameter, epsilon. So we call a program epsilon differentially private, and for any two similar input databases, the output distributions are epsilon close to each other. Here, uh, this similarity relation between databases depends on exactly what kind of information we're trying to mask, so they're problem specific. Uh, this epsilon close relationship between two distributions means that for any possible sample that we can draw from both output distributions, the multiplicative difference of the sample's probability under both distributions are bounded by e to the epsilon. So let's look at an uh, example algorithm called the port noisy mass. For this one, the input is an array of numbers, and two inputs are considered similar if their pointwise values are bounded by one. Under this similarity relation, the port noisy max is a two-dimensionally private number. And operationally, um, this algorithm adds noise sampled from this highlighted Laplace distribution to each of the input values in the input array. And it remembers uh, the index of the largest noisy max value seen so far. And at the end of the loop, it returns uh, the, that index. Um, so although the Definition of differential privacy is quite complicated. Experts have come up with a uh, reasonably general proof technique that works on a large class of algorithms. The general idea is this. Let's consider two runs of the port noisy max on uh, a pair of similar inputs. Um, because for this particular algorithm, we know it returns an index value into the input array, you know, the range of possible outputs are zero up to n minus one, where n is the length of the input array. Uh, this proof technique requires that for each possible output index value i, we show that the probability of getting i uh, under both distributions have multiplicative difference bounded by e to the epsilon. Our main contribution is that uh, we can in fact specialize this proof technique into a testing technique by considering the proof structure together with instrumented execution traces um, on one of the inputs and symbolic execution traces on the other input. So let's abstract things a little bit. Um, here, uh, TIXS1 is the set of program execution traces that lead to output i with input xs1. And similarly, ti xs2 is the set of traces that lead to output i on xs2. Proofs using this uh, proof technique are essentially trying to show that there exists some kind of relation r between executions such that for any execution on the left uh, that leads to output i using input xs1, there exists some dual execution on the right that uses the input xs2, such that the relation r holds between them. 
Here, R needs to satisfy some more properties, and the details of that are designed to make sure this property complies with into privacy, but we, we won't need to unpack those here. So um, we observe that uh, instead of universally quantifying over the left-handed side um, execution trace, we can simply sample them from actually running the program on some input access form. And for each of those sample traces, we're going to substitute the originally universally quantified variable with the concretely sampled trace. And we're going to build a large conjunction over all of these sample traces. As we take more and more samples uh, from running the program, and as we increase the size of this conjunction, we're kind of getting closer and closer to the original universally quantified proof. So this resulting testing technique uh, is indeed a hybrid approach that both performs proof search via uh, an SMT solver and collects uh, statistical significance, significance from sampling. So in our implementation, we use uh, the SMT solver T3 and we pass an SMT model that represents uh, the formula shown on the previous slide to Z3 and ask, is the model satisfiable or not? So a satisfiable model corresponds to passing the differential privacy test, while a non-satisfiable model fails the test. Um, however, we need to be careful uh, because uh, a passing test is not a proof that the program is differential private because we replace the universal quantification with concrete samples. But you can imagine as we take more and more concrete samples, we gain more and more confidence in the uh, differential privacy property of this program. Um, at the same time, a test failure is not, necessar not necessarily um, a proof that this program is not differential private because maybe the program cannot be proven to be differentially private using this particular proof technique. But then this program must be highly unusual uh, since the proof technique works for a lot of algorithms and this kind of failure will prompt us to take a careful look at the program. So how well does this hybrid testing method work? Um, we evaluated our implementation on a comprehensive set of benchmark algorithms that's taken from all of the previous related work. We manually implemented the correct version of each algorithm and one or more non-differentially private variants. That, um, uh, and then we, it turns out that we can correctly distinguish the differentially private and non-differentially private variants of all of these algorithms. In addition to a complicated algorithm called Cryptree, that could not be automatically checked before. We also wanted to see if our framework can be used to help develop real world software. So we performed a case study on the disclosure avoidance system, DAS, which is used by the Census Bureau to aggregate population counts in the 2020 census. We looked at the source code of DAS and uh, we implemented the core privacy mechanism of DAS in the language accepted by our testing framework. And we check that no uh, violations of potential privacy is recorded. Um, our, we also use uh, the code extraction feature of BPCheck to uh, convert this re-implemented core privacy mechanism back into Python 3. And then we integrated the extracted code with uh, the rest of DAS. We then ran a lot of statistical tests to make sure both versions of DAS behave identically as a sanity check. To conclude, um, we converted a proof technique of differential privacy into a testing technique. Uh, the implementation based on this testing technique is a fully automated testing framework for differential privacy. We can correctly handle uh, the comprehensive set of benchmark algorithms studied so far, in addition to a complex algorithm that couldn't be automatically checked before. 
there are a few more interesting details in the paper. Um, we talk about the connection between formalizations of potential privacy and program logics to this quick technique. Um, we also talk about uh, some optimization we did in the symbolic interpreter used by DP check to avoid exponential state blow up. However, uh, there is still a um, computational bottleneck for solving these SMT models as the models get larger and larger as we take more samples. And this has uh, implications on how we can use DP check to validate other means. And we talk about those implications in the paper. And that's all. Uh, thank you. And I will take your questions virtually. Right